Bienvenuti a Caole. Yes, welcome Ultimate fans to the European Ultimate Championship Finals 2022 here in the gorgeous Italy. We've had it all. We've had rain, we've had storms, we've had thunder and lightning, very, very frightening, but the sun is coming out here for finals day the women's final the tussle for the top and once again we have yaka of paris france and kust shout from bologna the home side you could say will that be to their advantage they won it here in 2019 on these fields but it's going to be a campaign as we get underway kust on offense this can has get the field coming underneath so these teams play yesterday in the semis and they had pretty good results. It was an easy cruise through the pools and that is an easy cruise for the first point on the board for Kusp Schaut. So Hannah Penderbury in the booth this fine day with Luke Burgess. How are we feeling about these two teams, Luke? Oh, I'm very excited for this game. We did both the semi-finals yesterday, me and you, Hannah, on the other pitch, but just one pitch for today. Both teams looked very strong in those matchups. Yaka winning over Seagulls very, very comfortably in their semi-final. Took a strong lead to start the game and then just closed it out. And similar affair for the Bologna side. They beat Bristol in their semi-final yesterday with another early lead, not quite as dominant as Yaka, but Bristol were playing some incredible defense in that game, so no, no shame to not completely walk your semi-final at the end of the European season. And there were opportunities for Bristol to take that game and really give a good go at Shout. They were, I think probably I would say Shout's offense yesterday was a lot better than Yaka's. It took mm. them a really long time a full 93 minutes, I think, to close out that final scoreline against Seagulls, who had given a lot of their tank, of course, to defeating their local rivals, Jinx, from Berlin. As we see Fennig on the far sideline, of course, coming back to play for Yaka and the European season, having played with noise at Wells. And that's a big shot into the end zone and bringing it in, of course, Elise Becke off the paws of Aline Mondieu. Two nice, clean holds from both teams to start out this game. That's what we like to see. Nice, confident offense. Yeah, as you were saying, the, the Yaka side's offense did take a while to put away their semi-final, but in their defense, the conditions were a bit challenging. I think the, the, the wind was a bit heavier in, in their game than in the, than the shout game, so it went a bit upwind, downwind towards the end of that contest but beautiful conditions for playing on this fine Sunday morning. Absolutely. The conditions are nigh on perfect for a game of ultimate frisbee. And of course, we won't ruin the score. If you've only just woken up, we won't blame you. It was a very early start mm. to the open final, which we just saw close up ahead of this one. But if you don't know the result already, I highly recommend when you're done with this game and the mix of final, of course, which will follow, Wind back the clock and get your eyeballs on that one because it was a heck of a showdown as these two teams go clean for the first. We're going to get us back underway. Nice giving and going in the centre field to open up this one. Scherzieri though with the unforced error trying to hit Bonfante. But that's going to be our first turnover of the game for swing pass. Yes, yeah, Kirsten's offense looked a bit static on that one. So picking it up. Matos is going to throw a turn of her own, gifting the dispatch to the Italians straight away. But pinned to the near sideline. Bengi in the bucket hat had a fantastic day yesterday, as did Pagliarini. Working so well from the backspace for Kirsten. Irene Scazzieri tries to find her sister, but it's snaffled away by Knudsen. Yakin out, looking around for options. De Laval. Calls for the undercut. Oh, oh, and it's a huge block to get it back for Ariana Paglarini. Looks around, says, why is no one else running through and picking up the disc? I'm ready to go. 
Oh, that's a beautiful put. It might sit and hang too much. Yes, it does. Snaffles the disc, Claudio Mata. Yeah, both teams making mistakes now. Well, a turnover heavy point. Is this going to be the first break of the game? Luka Kudsman with a low inside shot to Matis. A new face for this Yaka outfit, I believe. Of course, Yaka didn't have the best Worlds campaign. They lost in their pre-quarter final. Ending up 15th, which is no bad result. But getting taken out of the top set by Mavericks from Tokyo. Nice big reaching to Knudsen, has to do a bit of fancy footwork. And of course, Kusp are very pleased to have the likes of Laura, Laura Palofi and Anna Czeski back, who were missing for Wells. They finished up 24th. It's a very strong women's division at Wells. So no, no shame finishing where these teams did. They're still quality sides. And these two certainly have been the quality of this European women's division. Big coverage on the dumps. De Laval on the far side, just squeaking through. This for the first break of the game. Early doors. Luka Knudsen, the Dane, looks around. Afonso pops forward, and there is the goal. Eventually, the break is found for Yaka Clara Matias, bringing that one in. Nicely done from Yaka. Bit of a grindy point. It started out with a simple throwaway from Kusp Schout. Their offense downfield looks very static. So we went for the reset option and threw it away as we get another look at that huge layout block. Yeah, Pagliarini not afraid to throw herself around the field here, but that was good patience swinging from the D-line of Yaka. Of course, they were knocked out in 2019 by Shout. To advance, they had to settle for bronze. And these two showing down in 2021 on the AstroTurf Fields in Bruges. Mm. Another storm-impacted tournament. It was an excellent game, though. Still available to watch on the Alter TV YouTube channel. If you want to go and Look at the history of these two teams and their matchups together. Well, a more decorated program in terms of uh, halls for medals for Shout. They were bronze medalists starting off their charge in 2015. Silvers, as we say, last year and 2016, and then winning the big show in 2019 and, of course, 2018, their first medal at the top spot. So, Sorrenti across to Ferolfi, who is back post-injury. She's got a lot of compression on that right quad, but still devilishly fast. Scazzieri. Mingi. Oh, and Pagliarini opening up a huge one for off. He's going to have to run that down, but very nicely read indeed by the ex-Euro star. Excellent offense from Schaup. This is what we came to expect after watching the semi-final yesterday. Just fluidly moving the disc down the far side of the pitch. And a good read in the end zone to secure the score. It's not quite as fast paced in terms of the offense of the Italians, which I think is probably for the better in this game. Yesterday, when we saw them play against Bristol, they were really, really fast, but at times a bit frantic. This feels a little bit more conservative. I mean, the timing yeah. though was like a well-rehearsed dance routine yesterday. Oh, at, at times it. The, the disc was barely in the, the player's hands for a second before it was thrown again. I, for one, am hoping we see a bit more of that later, but you're right when you say that Shout are looking very composed, very controlled in this game so far. And we certainly know that the defense of Yakut is world class. They got so many turns in their game against Seagulls. Unfortunately, with the wind and the Seagulls zone, caused them a few issues. They're a bit hasty at times, which is the same for their quarterfinal match they were saying that they were taking some high risk not always high reward <laughs> options and that is a heckin pull coming out of the pause of Casarini. 
Caroline Tisson without a mark. There's plenty of options. Delaval swings across. Dabin. Oh, bobbles off the hands. Oh, you see the immediately goes to her face, but she does put the D on, and it's a run through block to get it back. Catalina Meisel. Now, that is a handy player to come across to your squad. Meisel, the Austrian. Does fantastic workouts with her partner. Couples that work out together get extremely buff together, I hear. <laughs> Lovely through to Delaval. And we see the zone from the Italians trying to confuse the near space. Not much spreading across the field. Jakut happy to take those small, slightly uncomfortable space, but that's a nice shot through from the poles of Meisel. Yeah, they're getting shots through the middle of the zone occasionally, but they're not following that up. They're not staying ahead of that cup. and converting it into a threatening scoring opportunity. Well, we now see the melt to match as Tisson tries to go for it with one hand. That was thrown behind her by Delaval. Oh, and Lolly's going to put it into the end zone, but it's going to be a bit too far. Just sails past like Pancotti. That's a huge missed opportunity for Shout. They did so well to contain the Aka offense for so long in that zone. And then when they switched it up to match, Jakob were not ready for it, got the block, but just a lack of composure. Well, Meisel bringing us back in. Currently living in Leuven, Belgium, but originally, as we say, from Austria, she finds Tissot in the near space. We did see yesterday against the wind, Jakob throwing lots and lots of passes, taking their time. It's a bit of a... Uh, sedative to watch but that is a beautiful pass and that's going to get a little bit exciting as it sits and hangs in the end zone the big shot and then just tips off has another go at it but emma delorney can't quite make it work from japan he finds the inside to loli a little bit of a stumble here these fields have been ground up Took a bit of a jog yesterday around the field complex here. It is lovely and springy underfoot, but doesn't really help when you're trying to turn yourself around. This is good flow now from the Italians. Not quite the clockwork style timing from yesterday. Bit of a bit of a bump on the mark for Casarini. But with two players sandwiching you, there's going to be someone available upfield. Frangipani with the dish over the top, that is beautiful, and an easy goal, just reaches out the hand in front, Nada Tramonte, and that is a hold for, no, I tell you what, that's not, that's a break for Kuss, it's, it's we back to, we're back on serve, there we are. So, Kuss shout, convert in the end, I was very impressed with their defence on the first possession, they were a little bit unfortunate to have rushed their first break opportunity. But that looked a lot more calm and composed. Just marching the disc down the field, finding the open players. We have a game on our hands, Annie. Oh, well, we've had a game on our hands from the very start. We knew ahead of this match, these two teams hadn't really been tested that hard up until this point. I think we uh, described Yaka as having been on cruise control through the pool stages. Not to disrespect any of the teams here, of course, this women's division, a little bit of a curious format this season. Just turn up and play. So we've got some really cool opportunities for younger programs to have come and played against these top level teams. There's been a combo team from the UK allowing players that wanted to turn up to come out here on the fields in Kaorle. And of course, a wonderful accommodation site that hosted many excellent parties for those not in the finals, not having to go to business today. But of course, those placement games, final ones, have been optional. We're trying to save the fields that were under torrential conditions earlier this week. It's good to see the sun back out for the finals, though. You might be able to catch it on our microphones. There's been a celebration from the victors of the Open Final in our winner's circle, just to our right. but. 
in front of us now. Two teams hoping to get themselves into that exclusive VIP area. Becke into Fennec. The ball, low one for Bass, but she collects it well. Castillo, those two connected so well yesterday. Castillo is such a rapid player, finds Fennig instead. Lovely around. Becke pops to Fennig. Oh, it's a lovely around break, reeled in with a huge save by Castillo. Whether or not it's in bounds or not, or a foul perhaps, there we are. Foul on the throw for Fennig. That's why Castillo had to rescue it quite in the way she did. So it's a hammer over the top in the end for Fennec. Bass oh. has a go at it, but unfortunately that one is going to go to ground. I believed. I thought Bass was going to get that. I like the look. There was space. Well, it's an interesting one. It's a, a nice shot to the space. If we see another replay of that one to Castillo. But uh, not to disparage Paula Bass. She's very good at catching. Better at throwing, I'd wager. But she's not exactly big. And with a hammer, the way it arcs down, it's not the easiest for our smaller stature players. <laughs> but the Italians with another chance here to put themselves in front by two. Frangipane, long time. Cusp shout player. Casarini. Oh, nice one to the knees goes Saskia Bick. This is just really nice, patient flow for the D line of the Italians. Ragolini. I can put my teeth back in and say her name correctly. Rabaglia, the number 51 with a fetching necky. Frangipani puts it out into the space, and that is the goal for the Italians. Three on the bounce and two breaks pretty. Excellent small ball offense in this near corner to secure the point for Shout. They did so well working the disc down the pitch, making themselves available despite the lack of space. Happy to work in this near corner. So we see that hammer again. So close. Well, as the Italians look to put a lead on, almost seems like they're calling a timeout, but they seem to be circled up together. In fact, that does indeed look suspiciously like a timeout has been called, probably by Yaka conceding those three on the bounce. Of course, the scoreline of this women's final last time out in 2021 in Bruges ended up 15-9 to the Italians. No, the, to Jacob. the French. What am to I Jacob. on about? Yeah. So at the moment, the Italians looking to do a similar destruction to their opponents. But we're going to take a brief break here in the booth. We'll be back with more action for the first half after this. We believe mixed is the best for the sport, for the world. That's why we're making a global showcase starting in Europe, made in Amsterdam. Ultileague. Ultileague.net. We are Hive Ultimate, a group of players and coaches from all over the world working together to progress the next generation of ultimate strategy. We've helped top teams win world championships and new teams introduce the sport in a fun and inclusive way. Search for Hive Ultimate on YouTube to learn more about our cutting edge strategies and to see analysis of world-class teams. To find out what Hive can do for your team, head over to our Patreon page where you can gain access to our exclusive drills and session plans and to join our worldwide community of coaches. Get ahead of the curve with Hive Ultimate. The women's gold medal match at the European Ultimate Club Championship Finals 2022 here in Gaorle, Italy. Hannah Pendry in the booth with Luke Burgess Yo this fine Italian morning where we see the Cusp shout side 
on home turf. One break over Yaka of France. Of course, having come out on offense, they are 4-2 ahead. And we see they put another zone on this time. Choosing to favor it. They were 25 passes in that initial zone point that the Italians played. Trying to make Yaka play the numbers and force the error. Valet, who was devastating in the end zone yesterday. Oh, but Tisson with a complete lack of focus and attention, thinking about the downfield, gives the disc immediately to Kusp. Chishki back with her club side after being missing at Wells, and that's a beautiful one around. Two players bidding for it. Kiana Lolly's going to come up with the disc, but whether it was inbounds or not. Look pretty good to me, Luke. Well, we might get another look of it here. Has been called a goal. Yeah, very clearly inbounds. Nearly some friendly fire on that <laughs> one, though. That would have been an awkward strip. I was a bit worried when I saw two players run into the same space, but they make it work. So Shao kind of running away with it in this first half. 5-2, four unanswered. This is not the start that Yaka won. No, I think coming into this tournament, most of us had Yaka as favorites to win. And coming into this game, I think most of us also had Yaka as favorites to win. I did not, I had Shao. Yeah. I think you did as well. We saw them play yesterday. Yeah, we saw the semi-finals yesterday. And even though you could say that, you know, both the score lines were had, had large deficits. Mm. There was a moment in, let's say, in the midsection of the Shout Bristol game where Bristol could have put themselves back in it. Mm. They were 7 2 down, ended up at 7 5 with three on the bounce. But it was just a case of Shout's offense looked a lot better mm. than the French's did. I agree. It took them a long time to score. And at the moment, the Italians are making the French wait a really long time to score. And they're not doing that final pass. But this could all be changed as we see hot pressure laying on the shoulders. Caroline, it's like Maria Castillo. Dull. The Dutch player who has become a true Yaka athlete. Castillo clearing through Mondio, Rasta coming under. It's going to be a beautiful put out into the space. The defense is under it, just sails over the fingertips, but puts off the receiver. Maria Castillo unable to connect. And Sofia Scaziari baits the misread. Well, Scaziari, one of the best defenders in the women's game. And of course, one of the homegrown Bologna players. They've got such an impressive program, as we mentioned before, building up, but that's going to be snaffled by Le Bon. The age and experience, wily stuff. Oh, and there is separation in the end zone, chooses not to take it. Not going for the obvious shot. To Mondio across the field. That is a beautiful shot to space. And more like it for Yaka. Nicely done. Good patience outside the end zone. Looked off the tight break throw. And then found the space on the far side. The block was very intelligent as well. Just baiting a throw into space that didn't actually exist. We could criticize shout spacing here a little bit as well allowing that defender to be there rather than covering a more threatening receiver it's not so much the spacing because that's a poach off of a nicely level sort of you know far away handler i think it's the recognition the lack of recognition of the poach and actually saying you know that would be an easy sort of you know just swing pass you can even pop it straight back but just to move that poach out of the lane that's the i think the difference just not really seeing LeBourne. nanu it's just 
puts on a bit of an invincibility cloak. You can't see me. Yeah. I'm not here. Oh, wait, I'm here catching the frisbee that you tried to throw to your teammate. But a bit of a whoops moment for Kusp. You mentioned the program that they've got going in Bologna. It's been established for a number of years now, and it's produced most famously the Shoutside and Lafotta in the Open Division. Indeed, and there's so many Italian sides now, not just Bologna creating great teams. But of course, representing with multiple sides. Even in the mixed division, Italians playing mixed, I'm very here for it. It's not something we've seen often, but uh, it's starting to happen because they just have oodles and oodles of talented athletes, world-class stuff. And then it's Gazzieri, he's going to put that one up. You see the head turn and a big high grab. That's the number 21, Elena Bengi, with the goal. Yep. That seemed very smooth. Very smooth, I was just about to say. Very smooth offense. Not Again, not as, as fast as we saw yesterday against Bristol. They're not pinging this ground quite as quickly, but it is still moving with good tempo. They're not waiting around. They're not having to look off multiple downfield options and then go for a reset. They're staying spread out, finding each other in space. And Yaka are struggling to put on any meaningful defensive pressure at this point. Well, they're there on the shoulders. I think part of it has to be, because that execution was at the very edges of Bengi's ability to reel it in. I think it's just that confidence. You know, they've come out, they've done four on the trot. You know, basically they punch Shaka directly in the mouth four times. And they're kind of like, yeah, we got this. There've been a couple of lack of focus moments from Yaka. Maybe they didn't quite have the warm up they wanted to this morning. Maybe some of them are a little bit sleepy, taking their time to get into this match. But of course, we did see some fantastic defense from Yaka yesterday. So we could well see the fates change and momentum turn as Bas puts a beautiful one out into the space of Elise Becke. Oh, and that's a visionary shot. Is it to nobody though? I think it is. She had ideas that her teammates did not. To Casalini Santos. Lolly. This is lovely flow across the far side. Tremonte back. Just happy to play ball up that far side. Trying to hit Chiara Lolly again, but chooses the year round. This does look pretty chill on the underneath. Clearly concerned about those big shots. Fennig on Tremonte. Nice move in from Giovannini. Pick is cold, however. Yeah, very, uh, very wide open. Better defense from Yak at this point. They're close. Another Tremonte with an around pass to Chiara Loli. Oh, that's beautiful separation on the far side. Rasta is sold by Erika Marcassini for the goal. Having just said that Jakob were close on defense, Shout proceed to prove me wrong, <laughs> move the distance to the break side and punch it into the end zone. Well, that's the break side, though. You're always going to have a little bit more of a buffer on the break side if you're doing your job and holding the force. The offense has to get it there first, though. And they did. They did. So a timeout potentially being called indeed by the Italian coach. They're, of course, looked after by Leandro Calabresi, Diego Signoretti and Ella Cromhecke. And Barbara Bondi as well, of course. Like four people on the coaching staff. But we're going to take a brief break if you need to grab yourself a refreshment or perhaps some fresh air. We'll be back after these messages.
always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. And if you want to help us grow ultimate, you can indeed go to those links and sign yourself up as a patron of the art of broadcasting ultimate frisbee. And of course, this women's gold medal match here at the European Ultimate Club Championships. It is the finals. We've had one. This is number two, mixed yet to come. But of course, it's the Italians of Bologna, Kuspschaut, leading Jacke from Paris. Impressive start to the game from Schaut. Their offense is looking very smooth, very composed. And a few mistakes from Yaka has allowed Shout to take this lead. Well, bolstered by their talismanic leaders returning in the shape of Laura Farolfi and Anna Czeski, who were missing at Worlds, of course. Saw Yaka perform much better in Cincinnati than the Italians. Let's see if they can work together to crush through the Italian zone. There's a high stall before. Fennig now moving aggressively through. You can see the way she moves around the back, always active, always sort of on the balls of the feet, which is how you have to play against zone. Oh, beautiful stuff from Castillo. Oh, just off the fingertips of Fennig. A rare error. You don't see many of those, especially when it's with a bid. As Fennig collects a good amount of the field on her shirt. Bangotti on the far side, looking around. Going to dish to Frangipani. Rabaglia now. It's just nice, patient moving around the back. Huge pressure from Castillo on Farolfi. Nice adjustment. On Chesky for the upline. I'm getting so excited by all of the matchups on the field here. These are just two fantastic teams going toe to toe. From Japan around. This is much better defense from Yaka. Clearly, they've had some snacks in their timeout to give them a bit more fuel for their fire. And a just bizarro. Miss release from Laura Falolfi. You can see their facial expression on that one. You mentioned the defense of Miaka. It was causing them problems. The, the Italians were not able to move the disc as fluidly down the field as we've seen in previous points. And that pressure eventually got to them. So Mondio picking up match defense now. Chloe Valle is going to put a lovely floaty one off. Castillo with a ripper for Fennig. Has the height, has the box, takes the goal with ease, and it's a little bit of a kick spike to decorate it. Very casual kick spike. Well, you don't want to kick the disc hard. You might break it. <laughs> and we can't be having that. It's all about no, no, no. the gentle spikes. This is a civilized, civilized game. I feel like it should be like golf. <laughs> you know, there should be cer certain penalties for th things like a. You know, a little bit, like, not, not a monetary fine, but perhaps, you know, like having to do a lap of the field if you break a frisbee, <laughs> something like that. But, uh, or, or perhaps pay the Euro European Ultimate Federation for the disc that you just destroyed, if it's intentional. So, yeah, it seems reasonable. But a nice throw from Castillo. Of course, a fantastic target in the end zone. But we fangirl Robin Fennig a fair amount. We do. It was a pretty high percentage option, all things considered. And speaking of Americans, someone we've not really spoken about much on the Cusp roster, who's been very, very just solid throughout this tournament, is Nader Tremonte, who is actually hails from Arlington, Virginia. 
currently playing for this CUSP side. Very excited to be representing an Italian name, given her Italian heritage. And they actually, her family owns a small business called the Italian Store that sells many delicacies. Mm. So if you ever find yourself in Virginia, feel free to check them out. Paglianini, dish to Harris, who also happens to be an American playing at this European level, but a long-standing one. Scazzieri, far side, just keeping again. De Laval flying around on the mark. Bengi. Tremonte. Oh, and that's going to be a lovely throw into the space. But out of bounds. Edene Scazzieri not able to shove that back foot behind her because she has to use all her momentum to grab the disc that was a little bit racy from Gaia Pancotti. So this is a big opportunity for the French. Yeah, yeah Sorrenti saw that option in the end zone but just hesitated a little bit and ends up pushing it slightly too wide. So Caroline Tucson, we saw her come unstuck earlier in this game due to just having a bit of a lack of focus, but Katharina Meisel. The Austrian handler. Squeaking it through to Tucson. Cheeky scuba over the top. We like a bit of that. Becquet underneath it. The legend herself, Tucson. De Laval. There is space over the top. I do like the immediate shot, but the uh, one two swings will also do. Now, my sort free to this side. But that's a good space over the top of the cup. Oh, has a little think about it. Does Sorrenti. Now, Yaka are well through jailbreak the zone. Mysore looking for an option around, finds one in Tissot. Oh, lovely high backhand dish to Deleval. Things looking a bit static, but Fennig is now going to go to work and collects another goal for her stat sheet. Much better zone offense from Yaka. They had the full length of the pitch to go and started trapped in the corner. But they just keep grinding. Keep finding the options. And keep this half alive, of course. These games being played out here on the fields to 90 minutes, half at either 45 minutes expired on the clock or, of course, to eight. Total score cap 15. Which feels like a basic thing to say, but, of course, it does happen to alter at most yeah. championships. Ever so slightly. Well, games to 15 are pretty standard these days, but of course you then go to the World Games and it's to 13. So... Precisely. We've had a fantastic summer of Ultimate. And as we draw to the close of the European season, we've still got some uh, indoors action. So if you're an international fan joining us for this live stream this fine Italian morning, if you've never watched indoors, I have to say, it is a very fun, dynamic sport. It's more of a game, I'd say. <laughs> it's beach as well, coming up later this, later this year. That's true. In a couple of weeks, we'll be in the uh, another party in Portimao. I'm sure many of these athletes will be coming to that one as well. We like a bit of end-of-season beach. It has a nice vibe to it. So Paglierini has the poach off. Ceski. Paglierini. Bengi. Nice one to Ferolfi. Oh, huge effort from Castillo. Doesn't quite manage to sneak through. She had an extra inch on her wingspan, maybe. Paglierini now. A little travel call. We'll just give us a, an extra stoppage. I think there's been a bit of contact in front of the mark. But everyone playing on. Lika Knudsen. 
trying to prevent Paglianini. Oh, and a little bit of a jink move in the front corner gives the disc to Anna Chesky, and that is half for Kusp, 8-5. What a smart move from Chesky. Not much space to get free in. But she's a big athlete. You've got a whole lot of real estate to throw into for that bread basket. She makes it work. So at the moment, we've seen some flashes of brilliance from the French, but in charge right now, it is Cusp Shout. As these two teams take a break for half time, we are going to do exactly the same. So don't go anywhere. Keep your eyes peeled because this could go to the wire in the second half. See you on the other side. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world. And share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Opening moments of the second half here at the European Ultimate Club Championship Finals. And it is Yaka on offense, trailing against the Italians. Eight to five. The Cusp shout side of Bologna as we see Castillo underneath. Looks for Delaval, doesn't like it. And it's a huge grab for the save for Matias. Valle. Van Eyck throws away, tries to lead the pass for Mondio. Prefer to see that one the other way around, if I'm honest. Yeah, I've seen a few mistakes like that from Yaka so far this game. Just giving the disc away a bit too easily. Yeah, Yaka haven't really found their form yet in this game. Still very doable. They got two breaks back to respond to shouts for. Kiara Loli looking around. Saskia Bick swings across. Pancotti. Lots of momentum, the power position. It's a little bit of a late one, but Saskia Bick is going to be under that for days. Has Isolation in the end zone, but chooses the back pass. Immediately goes to the races, and it's Saskia Bick for the goal, and it's another break for Kusp Schaut. Devastating stuff. The German pick-up, 
you could say pick up. She's been playing her frisbee for Yaka for quite some time. Of course, previously appearing, winning silver with Cosmic Girls back in 2019. She sort of played for a, a bit of everybody in Saskia Bic, and I can understand why you'd want to take her to any tournament. She's very good at frisbee. She is, and this back pass, give go into the end zone. Very intelligent move. Did well to bring the disc down as well. Mondio trying to put some pressure on. But Bick with the height advantage. Good read. And nice layout to secure the score. And we've had an update from the field site around here. We obviously, some of the games have decided not to play out, so they'll have tied finishing positions here at the European Championships. But of course, our bronze medal matches have been going on at a slightly earlier schedule. So I'm pleased to confirm. I mean, it's, we're not streaming it, unfortunately, so it's not a huge spoiler, but Bristol women have just won the bronze medal. They obviously beating out Seagulls of Hamburg. So they'll be going home with some dirty gold, as I affectionately refer to it. Because of course, when you don't win sil when you don't win and you end up with a silver, it doesn't feel quite as good as winning a bronze medal does. So Tisson centers to Knudsen. Matthias with a high grab, nearly sneaking in as Scatieri. Playing at the center of the cup, crashing in and trying to snaffle the disc away. This is nice patience, but tipped off the fingers. Sketieri with the block, but there's going to be a foul call from Tisson. Turnover has been signaled. Oh, picking it up, Guy Bancotti. And a foul call there, it is redeemed, so they decide to play on. Oh, I thought old feet going to work for Shout, and that is an immediate catch and throw into Scazzieri. And my, oh my, what a mirror image we have of the final from Bruges in 2021. This is extremely impressive from Shout. They're punishing every single Yaka mistake at this point. The zone is working surprisingly well, considering how little wind there is and how good Yaka are with the disc in their hands normally. I'd like to see them be a bit more aggressive and go for those over-the-top shots, Luke. I wonder if the previous hammer into the end zone turnover has, has scared them slightly to go for those. Although we did see some scubas earlier. Well, it doesn't have to be upside down. It just has to be an over the top of the cup. But the upside down throws rise over the defenders and then drop down so nicely. Oh, yeah, it's legit. I'm not saying they shouldn't do it. I'm just saying it doesn't have to be. You know, you can throw a blade. You can throw a roll curvy backhand. There's so many options, but I'd like to see them be a bit more aggressive and take on that deeper space because they are playing quite conservative, mm. which is fine. But the more passes they throw, and we saw it in their game against Seagulls yesterday. You know, you make them throw a lot of passes. They're not picture perfect. You yeah. need to maybe get a little bit of spice, a little bit of energy. And yeah. I think that's what those over the, shot, over the top shots do, especially it sort of demoralizes the defense. You know, you go off to the races, you've got a couple of people in the backspace. But that would be my solve to this puzzle. And that's a nice one over the top. The swing to Paula Bus. Good footwork to make sure it's inbounds. Thinks about the inside shot. And it's a swing to the far side for Fennig. Bick has a good look at it. Oh, and that's a beautiful shot into the space for Castillo. Well collected. What a find in the soft back pocket of the end zone. That connection works the other way around as well, it seems. Castillo threw one to Fennig earlier. And it's Fennig gunslinging this time. So I think what you're saying previously about the zone is, is absolutely bang on because that time we saw Shout come down with match defense and Yaka can convert in way fewer passes. There seems to be a hard cap on how comfortable they are at moving the disc. Once we've 
exceeded a certain number of passes. They always something always seems to go wrong, be it a drop, a throwaway, or a block. Well, it also it. By going over the top like that and having that aggression, that was a three-pass score in the end for Yaka's O-line. And they have had a couple of points where they have just come out, bish, bash, bosh, thanks, I'll put that one in the bank. It sort of makes you, as a defender, really have to play close, play tight, which gives you the advantage on offense because you know where you're going. The defender essentially is trying to take something away from you, but they have to react to your movement. And if you just take those unders, if you're just looking at the small space in the zone, if you're just playing conservative, it allows the defense to adjust to that and say, well, fine, run long. I don't think mm. you're going to throw it. But that point changes the dynamic a little bit. So Bonfante into Bancotti. This is nice movement. Chesky underneath, having gone away and played in the States for a while. Of course, playing for Raleigh Phoenix, who did very well indeed at Worlds. Bengi for Rolfi with a lot of steps on that catch. And a goal signaled. Caroline Tissot gives up the disc to Francesca Sorrenti. And that's another one for Kuss. Just to hold this time. But at the moment, they are leading so far ahead. Six breaks they've gotten in this game to Yakas too. Yeah, just to hold, but it was extremely confident. Yaka never really came close to getting a block. And if Yaka wants to come back into this game, they need to start forcing Shout to answer some questions. I, it's such a difficult job to do. Because at this stage, Yaka have left themselves with an absolute cliff face to scramble up. You're trying to now prevent Kusp Shout from scoring four points. And you have to put yourself a full eight on the board. On top of not showing a particularly threatening zone offense. Well, so we expected this to be a close one, and it was really not turned out that way at all. We're just getting... It's like the Yaka are flirting with being good. They are, they are so close. They're, 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 running away, they're running up to it, just, just putting their lips right next to being good at Frisbee's lips, and then running in the opposite direction again. Because there's some really nice moments. De Laval finds Fennig on the far side. And that's a low one. Can it be tipped off by the defence? It certainly is with the pause in the air. Susanna Casarini. Nice idea, but just not high enough. But a gift. Bancotti with the drop. You see Rasta there. Pulling her arms up. Gave some creds to her physio this morning. Two torn ligaments, but you wouldn't think it from the way she moves around the field and it's a lovely around backhand break the fake from Mumbio absolutely selling the mark and the Huck and D strategy from Yaka works out I guess well it's the first time we've seen a turnover in the second half we had two clean breaks for the Italians to start this one. And then two clean holds. But perhaps a little bit overconfidence from Gaia Pancotti. Affectionately known as Poppy by her teammates. And a uh, homegrown Bologna star. Started playing ultimate because Davide Mori, of course, the man himself. Mr. Bologna Ultimate. We've seen him on stream. We have, we have. He's looking good. Him, the man with no age. But uh, played because Davide Mori came to his high school, sorry, her high school even, to teach Ultimate. And she also coaches the Panthers team, I believe. Oh, Cheetahs. 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 Who are here? Yes. They were partying in the, the tent behind us on the first night after their games. So back in action. 
And Yaka coming out with a zone look of their own to try and cause some issues for the Italians and slow them down. That's a racy shot down the sideline. And Le Bourne is the one that picks it up again. But Nanu throws an immediate error. And that's an it's easy goal for sure. Is that Scazzieri money? Oh, yes, it is. Huck and D working for both teams, it seems. It's a repeat of the previous point. Low, deep shot. Immediate give back to the offense and quick score. Well, it was a nice idea for the zone. Did generate that block. But you see the miscommunication here just gets thrown as Dull decides to turn away. And of course, the two Scazzieri sisters, so useful. Sophia coming back from having played for Box of Vienna. And some former Tequila Boom Boom players also on the Italian side. They're not just good at getting people to come and play from them for, from other nations. They pick up some of their own country women as well. But Yaka looking a little bit deflated right now as they trot past us on the sidelines. Is this a home field advantage, do you think, Luke? Well, we're not in Bologna. No, but we are in Italy. And I believe that first gold medal, no, second gold medal even, 2019, 2018 was elsewhere. But Yaka will have something to say before we close the book on this one. Rasta has the shot available in the deep space from Valle. Big one over the top to Van Eyck. Can she make it work on the sideline? Yes, she can. Lovely, confident grab using the height mismatch. Inside backhand from Fennig. Oh, and that is a beautiful shot to space. World-class thrower, Aline Mondiaux. Very nice from Yaka. They've looked much better on offense these last few points, with the exception of the low huck throwaway. This was some very confident, very determined movement from the Yaka players. A nice, precise throw to the end zone. Yeah, that is a gorgeous little piece of offense. I'm a real big fan this tournament of the inside high release backhand. If you watch Dasis Rule play, I'm trying to gather in my memory exactly who she was playing with, but the uh, high release backhands of the Latvian, I think was playing with. No, I'm not even going to try. I've forgotten who Dasis Rule plays with. If you know in the comments, please tell me. But uh, the high release backhands have been lovely. However, since the Athletes on the field are taking a brief break, as shall we. We'll see you in a moment. The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. I'll be back to you. Enjoying the show? Show your support for the live stream and the people making the show. Buy a super chat or super sticker on YouTube directly. Select your donation and type your message to the world. And share. All donations go into directly funding new shows. Buy a super sticker or super chat now. Thank you. Women's second half and it is a bit of a startler. Cusp Shout currently leading the charge by a clear four points. 12-8 over Yaka of noisy le -Sec. It's not at all the game we expected. We expected a tight matchup toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This one is starting to trade out, but that first half, the Italians came out and got four on the bounce. The so now... Coming out on offense, 
Sorrenti. Pagliarini, formerly of Tequila Boom Boom, booms it to the underneath from Farolfi. Looking around for a reset. This is nice pressure from Paula Bus. It's a flat one. It's going to have to run down, but easy stuff for Bengi. Oh, that's a big high release. Tisson underneath it goes up high and early, but it sails over the pack and it's Farolfi for the goal. What a grab from Farolfi. That was all set up with some fantastic handler movement at the back from Kusp Schaup. They just kept it moving from side to side. And then after that flat swing across the field, there was an upline cut, power position, deep shot, goal. Yeah, I'm really loving the work in the handler space of Elena Bengi. She was so good yesterday as well in the semi-final. Yeah, this upline cut from Sorrenti, you can see her in the middle of the screen now. She started setting that up as soon as she saw the swing go wide past her. What a read in the end zone from Farofi for the score. Yeah, not the uh, highest percentage throw. It did sit up there for a very long time, and I think if the pack had read it as well as Farofi, it could have been a very different outcome of that point. But Chris put themselves within two of another gold medal to add to their haul. They are slightly more highly decorated than the French side. But it's going to be theirs to give up if Yaka can do something magical. Castillo underneath. Having a bit more of a quiet one this time out. You have to think that both these teams will have watched the tape from their previous games. Oh, and that's going to be huge pressure, but well taken by Chloe Vallée on the far side. Van Eyck leads Mondio, and it's going to be a beautiful put to two teammates. Excellent communication, no confusion. Melina Dabin with the goal, and that's a hold for Yaka. Nicely done from Yaka. They need some confident offense at this point in the game. Just work the list down the pitch. Punched into the end zone. Get your D-line back out there. They're running out of time, though. Well, clockwise, we're not doing too badly. Points-wise, however. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth, Luke. We've got half an hour to do it, but it's just whether or not you can stop the Cusp Shout offense. They've not been flawless. They have got some opportunities that they've been giving. But the cushion they've got is loaded with goose feathers. Really nice throw to the end zone. So we're seeing another look at that beautiful shot from the hands of Ali Mondiaux. Of course, World Games athlete in Birmingham earlier this season. Running around on some damaged ligaments, but we're seeing a crossover of Robin Fennig to the D-line. Rika Knudsen running down the pull. And Paula Bass putting on the mark. It's quite a close mark. It's a throw into the space. Huge pressure underneath it, but Dennis Gazzieri. Sure, I take it back. That's going to be Sofia Gazzieri, of course. It's a number 19, but goes up really strong cannot wait to see that one on a highlight reel later Farolfi back to Harris throwing around Pagliarini it's a racy swing around but well kept by Bengi Harris now that's a bit of a floaty one out to space for Farolfi but good body positioning Pagliarini 
Popping around. Oh, who on earth got caught sleeping in the back of the end zone? And the Italians are within one. It's game point shout after more beautiful offensive work. Jakoba close on defense a number of times, putting on a lot of pressure. But shout stands strong to get another look of this. Fantastic grab from Scazzieri. Yeah, the 30 year old coming out of the Bologna program. Started playing because of her sister Irene. And formerly playing volleyball. Sofia Scazzieri. So that's where she gets her incredible ups from, one might argue. Bit easier to jump off of uh, grass than it is sand if she's a beach volleyballer. It's true. But lots of transferable skills. Field hockey, interestingly enough, Luke, also an excellent crossover sport for Ultimate in terms of uh, field awareness. All, all field, field invasion sports are really. It's, I like a field invasion sport. Yeah. Well, at the moment, it is Kursp Shout who have invaded and stormed the castle. So you see Farofi there on the screen. Long term, long time captain of Kursp. They really do miss her when she's gone. She's like a lucky charm for the Italians. It's lovely to see her back after injury. She's had a few, but swaggering into the center of the field after that pull out of bounds is Katarina Meisel. Katy. Previously played for Mosquitoes, who appeared in the mixed division here at the European Championships with a very young squad. 14 of the under 20s Austrian players on that side here in the mixed division. But this is the women's as Yaka fights to stay alive. The Italians coming back out with a zone look. Meisel. Has Nanu near side. Oh, and that's a lovely shot out into the space. The release on that inside flick was just perfect. Castillo now having Frangipane busy. De Laval to Meisel. This is a fantastic movement from Yaka. Hot pressure. Cannot deny Deban. Just moving it around the back. Presents. That's a very high one for a very small receiver indeed. And Frangipane, a head taller, collects the loose disc. Pick called in the stack. I was hopeful for Yaka on that possession. They looked good after breaking through the zone, but just to get the block. Well, if you're Italy, you're grinning right now because at the moment, you're doing exactly to Yaka what they did to you last season. 15-9 was the scoreline in the end there. Tremonte going up, but Delaval says no. Great defense from Delaval. Got up nice and early. You could see on her face though the relief. She just gasps for air, Matthias. Oh, and a lack of focus again from Yaka. Gives the disc straight back. Zend just with the drop. And could this be the moment? Anna Cheski looking around, a little bit lost for options. Squeaks one out to Tremonte. Oh, and it could it be? Yes, it is. That is goal for the Italians. But a foul might bring us back. No one likes to interrupt a gold medal winning score, but calls do happen. 
and we'll have an action replay of the celebrations from Kusk. Yaka concede the goal and it is a flip reverse of last season's scoreline. They will clutch this one 15-9 in the end and they just closed the door, slammed it shut in the face of a very talented French side. Dominant performance from Shout. Never let Yaka back into the game after they got that early lead in the first half. They had a fantastic game plan, their zone, putting in work all game long. Yaka never really came up with a convincing answer to it. And shouts offense. Fluid as always. They are your European champions. Indeed, they will be celebrating with their compatriots as the boys now come onto the field. We'll have a look at the highlights of this game. And it just was such a dominant performance for the team in white. Another look at that gold medal winning score. Massive creds to Susanna Casarini, who was all over the field in that game. Two blocks to her tally. But who's really impressed me this week, actually, for Cusp, it's been Ariana Pagliarini. Just an absolute cog in the offense of Shout. And two doggos there enjoying the scenes, as are we. So that's going to wrap us up for the women's gold medal match. Mixed yet to come. We have Hut facing off against Reading Ultimate. In the pool stages, it was a sudden death finish. So we might get another tight one on our hands. We're going to bounce over to the winner's circle to interview and have some action with Shout, who will be shouting all evening, partying. They don't have to go too far to get home so they can enjoy the scenes here with their huge club side. But thank you for joining us for the women's gold medal match. It's been a pleasure for myself, Hannah Pendlebury, for Luke Burgess, and for all of our Ulti TV crew. You can support Ultimate, make it even bigger and better by becoming a patron of ours, but we'll see you on the other side for the mixed final coming up. Thank you.